Okay, is that folk music that you play there? What is that? How do you call that folk music? <laughs> I think it was Stud Circle who asked Big Bill Brunzi, did he consider his blues music to be folk music? And Big Bill says, well, I never heard, heard no horse. <laughs> <laughs> Kids playing in my hydrant, breaking all the rules. Dad's working in my alley, lays down his tools. It's too hot for working, no way to stay cool. Sweltering days of summer, I want to drift in a pool. Sun's blistering up the pavement, shimmers in the heat. We run into the water, kick it with our feet. Nobody is swaying to music that's playing. Old songs on the radio are gonna help me drift away today. We walk down by the river. The fisherman there caught nothing since the weekend. We just sit and stare. It's too hard for moving. It's too hard to play. Find an old shade tree and while away the day. Mom hollers from the alley, Stacelin, you got any ice? Find a vendor making snow cones. Lime would be nice. It's too hot for touching our fingertips dance. I'd like to go swimming. I want to go swimming. I'd love to go swimming if we had the chance. Kids playing in the hydrant, trying to stay cool. Thank you. Welcome to Horses Sing None of It. I'm Tommy Mahoney sitting in for Ralph Litwin, and our guest today is Arthur Sherry. Welcome, Thank you, Tommy. Arthur. Thank you, Tommy. I'm honored to be here. I'm really happy to stand among all these great musicians. Um, that song was about uh, 
global warming that's fast coming upon us and how we're going to try to cope in New York City. I spent I spent a while in uh, San Antonio, and so it's kind of where this song comes from. So where uh, are you originally from? I grew up in West Nyack, just up the river from New York, uh, about actually right across from the 20-mile sign on the throughway. So that's how far away, I have, how far I've come in my life, <laughs> 20 miles. Um, and I, I live in, in Manhattan, way uptown. I'm in wood now. So how'd you get into music? I started when I was a kid. My mom sort of forced piano lessons on me, and I took those for a while, and, and then uh, violin. And then my brother went away into the Navy. He was a professional musician, and he uh, left his guitar and amp to uh, joined the Navy and escaped the Vietnam War as best he could. And uh, so I grabbed it and started playing and just never put it down. And I was about 12 at the time. That's so a good age. Yeah. Good uh, age to start playing guitar. Yeah, yeah I, I just could never put it down. I just, I love to sing. I love to play. I played with my friends and stuff, joined a couple of garage bands. and. But then most, most of the time, it's just been solo work. Um, picking up stuff from my heroes, <laughs> the fingerstyle guys, Chet Atkins and, uh, and Hank and Tommy, you know, listening to those guys. And not doing anywhere near as well, but enjoying it a lot. Why don't you give us another song, Arthur? All right. I, I grew up in uh, San Antonio. I didn't grow up. I spent some time in San Antonio. And so this song kind of came out of that era of my life. She's a sweetheart of the rodeo, the clown's favorite girl. She makes him laugh, he laughs until he cries. She shared all of his good times and learned all of the best lines to make him feel he's on top of the world. And it's a hard life they're living, always moving from town town but they have to earn some money so they chase the rodeo down she's a sweetheart of a lady he's a gentleman in disguise they've shared all of the best parts the best parts of their lives and when they're grown Older, to her questions he'll reply. I'm glad that I've had you to share my life. And they've cared enough to share enough of all they've ever learned to keep their love growing strong when they both have gotten burned. And the sweetheart of the rodeo takes the clown by the hand to share life and eternity with the love of her man.
rodeo clown's got a rugged face and a rope burns on his hand. A pickup truck and a double wide are all they have for land. But when another dusty cowboy asks to take her to the dance, she says no, but thanks a million. The clown's my only romance. Would you like to share some thoughts of what inspired you to write songs? And well, I don't know. The crazy room I had in the basement was just full of stuff, and I started writing songs about what was on the walls. <laughs> um, I was in the folk club in high school, and that was just one of the things that we did. We just, you know, we wrote and shared songs, um, and uh, I guess that's where I like really got started. My aunt and my grandmother were both poets, and. Um, And so I think I got a lot of it from them, just kind of in the genes. And uh, it was, I don't know, my mom wrote, wrote a lot of things. My dad wrote too. You know, he wrote more you know, like scientific papers and stuff like that. But it, it just kind of in the family to write stuff. Um, and so one, kind of ironically, one day I was traveling down to uh, North Carolina with uh, my brothers to visit my mom. And uh, I spent some time down there hanging out and pulling books off her shelves. And some of the books were the books of poetry. I had my grandmother's poetry, so I grabbed the books of my aunt's poetry. And in the meantime, I slept under an air conditioner that probably hadn't been cleaned in about six or seven years and got bronchitis. So I spent the trip home with these books of poetry, lying in the back of the car, kind of fading in and out of consciousness. And uh, this rather short song came out of that trip. <laughs> It is in the way the gourd twists in her hand And in the way the rock curves like a shell Reflecting itself in the water It is in the flat slick clay and the scallops of the shell And in the flat gouges made by wind in the cliff. It is in the massiveness of it all, the features of the Indian woman of the cliff that is all one clay. It is in the single white cloud like a bowl and in the bowl on her head like a cloud. It is in the way the sky pivots around her as the gourd twists around her hand. Thank you, and thank you, Aunt Helen, and thank you, bronchitis. <laughs> Turning it around and making it positive, that's yeah, great. Right? That's, that's what you gotta do so often in this life, because vicissitudes are everywhere. What other things have you uh, did besides music? Uh, 
Well, I grew up wanting to play music, and I just, I don't know, I just didn't feel like I could actually make a living doing it because of the way I was playing, all those solo things. And may have been a mistake, maybe not, I don't know. I went into uh, model making, rapid prototypes. So I do computerized uh, milling, where I program one part of a compact or a perfume bottle or a part for a coffee maker or something like that. And um, then I make it and then I get another virtual model and I make another one of <laughs> something else totally different. And that's what I do all day. Um, I, sometimes I think I'm too good at what I do for a living to make music, but I love music. And uh, I found a, I have a rather long subway commute. So I got a little tiny traveler guitar and I practice on the subway with through headphones. Excellent. And that's how I get in enough practice time to actually keep, keep up some decent chops. And, uh, and play us another song? Okay. This one comes out of a summer I spent in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, in the park there, I can't remember the name of the park, but there's the probably the largest monument to a, uh, there's the largest monument to a lost the lo battle army that lost their battles, <laughs> lost the war. The coldest winter in Dixie, the summer we met again. In the shadow of Stonewall Jackson, Jeff Davis and Robert E. Lee. The carolum played a lilting strain. The trees softly whispered her name. A wintry chill ran down my spine, left me trembling and trembling in pain. Been winter nights in Alberta, warmer than that day. Birds singing sweetly in the whispering pines didn't mean a thing to me. Never hearing my heart's advice, crying, let it go, just let it be. The southern breeze couldn't thaw her heart or change what she had to say. Toy sailboats on a Georgia pond, I watch them drift away. Caught in the breeze blowing up my back on a cloudless autumn day. Thinking about her lips, softly whispering what I wish she would not say. The coldest day in Dixie, the temperature near 99. She turned from me crying, I'll walk away and know you'll be fine. The coldest winter in Dixie left me stumbling bitter and blind. She disappeared around the bend, just a shadow left in my mind. Coldest gold I ever held was the ring she put back in my hand. Weighing more than a wrecking ball filled with cold, wet sand. Kids laughing, playing on a merry-go-round didn't mean a thing to me. Never hearing my heart's advice, crying, let it go, just let it be. Toy sailboats on a Georgia pond, I watch them tack away. Caught in the wind blowing hard in my face on a cloudless autumn day. Thinking about her heels softly ticking on that hard baked Georgia clay.
temperature near 90. Arthur, I want to thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Tommy. Folks, after the credits roll, we have a special treat for you. Arthur, maybe you'd like to talk a little bit about the First Lady video. I was like just amazed at what uh, Michelle Obama had been doing in the schools and how she'd been really encouraging kids to learn. My son-in-law is a teacher, and some other people I've known in my life have been teachers, and, and I really admire what they do. And when she came out with all of her work supporting the schools and supporting education, I just felt I wanted to write a song, and it just sort of developed into this uh, video. I was so fooling. stay tuned for that after the credits roll. All right, I'd like to bring up the our honorable friend, Ralph Litwin, and we'll go out with St. Louis Blues.
first lady's cool. Teaches kids a fifth kids in school. With elf dance moves. Get up and swing. Get your body into motion. With health is her rule. Our first lady is nice. Apple sweet, honey, and spice. Got kids on her mind. Not wasting her time. She's serving. a head start. Teaching our kids is money well spent. You can succeed.